Good morning, and welcome to Edwards Congregational Church here in Davenport, Iowa. For those of you who are visiting from afar or maybe haven't been here in a very long time, I wanted you to get a glimpse of our outside building from the rear. This is the traditional way people came into our church and still do when they park in the parking lot in the back. It's a beautiful place all year round, but especially in the springtime when our trees are are flowering and when we hear the birds singing as we look around us and we look at the playground where so many lives have been changed where children have come to know Jesus where they've learned the songs and the traditions and the stories we long to see children here again and we are preparing resources and our hearts for the day when we will be together again and we will see some children. It's a beautiful day here and I hope it's a beautiful day when you're watching this. I want to invite you to join us in worship this morning knowing that this is your church home. If it's been your church home for generations or years or weeks or months, or maybe today you are coming for the first time. I want you to see the beauty that's here in this building and on the outside of the building because God has changed many lives here. And even though we're not here in the building today, it is still a place that holds our love while God is out in the world and we are out in the world. I want you to know that our congregation has been very instrumental in this community in a lot of different ways for over 180 years. Currently, we continue to offer blessings in a backpack on Fridays. We have um, Marilyn and Robert Riedesel who go over and hand out our bags that are put together by Julie Hankey and others. This is one of the ways that people support um, Edwards Church. These are the benefits that we have in being together as a community is knowing that we are making a difference in the world. We also have um, supported our gross house just recently with a special offering that we took up and was matched and we were able to make a generous donation to our gross house in order for them to pass on the blessing of their beautiful soaps to caregivers and first responders in this community. There are many ways that you can participate in being the hands and feet of Jesus in the world and in the community and in the wider church by offering your gifts back to God in the, in the uh, form of an offering. We thank you for all those who have supported Edwards over many, many years. I thank you for the regular offerings that are coming in the mail, and I thank you if you feel called to send us an offering through text or our online app. The, um, the directions for that will come up on a slide momentarily, and I offer you um, that opportunity to make a difference in the world. Because no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here at Edwards Congregational United Church of Christ.
We continue our Easter season here briefly in the sanctuary for those of you who are missing being together in our sacred space. I invite you to remember that all space is sacred and that God is with us no matter where we are. But I know it's hard not to be together and gathered in our own sanctuary. I also want to say Happy Mother's Day. I know for some this may be a difficult day for a variety of reasons, but I also want us to remember the mothering that all of us have been a party to in one way or another. If you had a precious relationship with your own mother, let us remember her this morning. If there are others in your life for whom you feel a particular calling or love toward a special neighbor, a friend's mom, those who have held you and loved you and nurtured you to the person you've been today, let us remember them as well. Let us remember that God is our parent, that God is the rock in our life, and that Jesus came to bring us all together. The early church knew that Christ went before them to prepare a place so they could be together. We too can be together no matter where we are and not let our hearts be troubled as today's message we'll talk about. Remember that in Acts 2, we're told that they gathered day by day and spent much time together. They broke bread and ate together in their homes. They shared their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. May your life also represent those special and precious words. Because we create a temple in our hearts that connect us across boundaries, across computers, across days and weeks, no matter when you are um, gathering together in this worship moment. Because at the heart of the matter, we are connected with the Holy Spirit. Hear these assurances from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and center here. Your mind secure and free. Let's take a deep breath together letting our shoulders relax, letting any tensions we feel that we've brought into this moment, let our bodies let that go with our breath. I invite you to pick up your heart stone or your worry stone and remind yourself that by touching this surface, you are in touch with God. God's touch is with you. It's within us and between us and around us. It's as close and real as the object in your hand right now. It's as close as love is to each and every one of us at all times. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love and offer this prayer of letting go. Into your care we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light of love and I invite you now to light your candle and set your worry stone near it and prepare your heart for the scripture. The psalm today mentions something we've been using throughout the Easter season, our rocks. God is described many times in the Bible as a rock, as something that is a solid foundation and a shelter in times of distress. 
hear the trust of the writer, even as hard times are upon them. I take refuge, refuge in you, Lord. Please never let me be put to shame. Rescue me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Deliver me quickly. Be a rock that protects me. Be a strong fortress that saves me. You are definitely my rock and my fortress. Guide me and lead me for the sake of your good name. Get me out of this net that's been set for me because you are my protective fortress. I entrust my spirit into your hands. You, Lord, God of faithfulness, you have saved me. My future is in your hands. Don't let me over to my enemies, to all who are out to get me. Shine your face on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Our future is in the hands of love, in the heart of God. Jesus, as God in the flesh, helps us to know that we are in the house and family of God. He called God Abba, an intimate name that a child would call a parent in the language Jesus spoke. God was not distant, but a parent who tenderly loves, protects faithfully, and wants us to know intimately. Hear Jesus comfort the disciples who are distressed at the thought of living without him. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me as well. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am, where you will be as well. You know the way that leads to where I am going. Thomas replied, but we don't know where are you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one becomes to, no one comes to have a God, but through me. If you really knew me, you would know Abba God. From this point on, you know Abba God, and you have seen God. Rabbi, Philip said, show us Abba God, and that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you don't know me? Whoever has seen me has seen Abba God. How can you say, show us your Abba? Don't you believe that I am in Abba God? and God is in me. The words I speak are not spoken of myself. It is Abba God living in me, who is accomplishing the works of God. Believe me that I am in God and God is in me, and else believe because of the works I do. The heart and truth of the matter is, anyone who has faith in me will do the works I do and greater works besides. Why? Because I go to Abba God, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that God may be glorified in me. Ask anything you ask in my name, I will do. John 14, one through 14.
from John um, and the Psalms, we hear a couple of images that I just want to lift up today to meditate on with you for a few moments and give you an opportunity to meditate on it yourself. I each week invite you to share with me and I invite you again to share with me or on our Facebook site or, or on your page um, some thoughts that you're having and then go ahead and tag Edwards UCC or mark that as your location so that those of us in the congregation can share our thoughts about these um, about these scriptures this morning. This morning I wanted to um, highlight this idea of the rock and the fortress of God, along with the way that Jesus is talking about, and kind of meld that with the fact that it's Mother's Day. I um, posted on my Facebook page earlier this week a picture of my mother, a random picture that I found. I don't have that many pictures of my mom because she was always there. My kids are probably going to say the same thing because I took most of the pictures. Um, it was just a regular picture of her in the backyard um, having, we were, probably had people over. We, we had a lot of people over um, at our house. And my mom is crocheting something. She was always creating something. She literally um, would love this whole, uh, this whole movement going on right now of upcycling things like curtains. Because she totally would have done that. Maybe she did for all I know. Um, maybe some of my dresses came out of that. I don't know. But I thought about um, the fact that we, we have conflicted feelings sometimes about our moms um, because our mom represents so much to us. And I thought of that in this opening of the John passage where Jesus talks about the many rooms, that Jesus is going there to prepare many rooms for us and that there's a place for us. And that is what mothering is about. And I, and I know that somewhere in your life, even if it wasn't with your own mother, somewhere in your life, there were people who made room for you. There were people who literally opened their homes for you. There were people who um, who made room in their hearts for you or room in their car as they gave you rides. You were probably some of those people to other people. You have opened up your heart, your home to people. And that is what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about being there and being ready. Jesus says, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live and you already know the road I'm taking. Now, they were confused and they said, well, no, we don't. We don't know where you're going and how are you getting there? They were always missing his, um, his meaning because they were looking at it very literally, what he was saying. But Jesus says, I am the, the way and the truth and the life. And we often like to get right to the truth without talking about that road. And he says that no one comes to the Father except through me. And he, they, they say, well, Jesus, then show us the Father and we'll be content. And Jesus says, you know, I am, he is in me and I am in him. And that love is in each and every one of us. And if you are remembering your mother with love and fondness this morning as I am, and the love that she showed for me, even in the, uh, the darkest times of her life, perhaps, or in hard times in my life, she was there for me just as Jesus is there for us. Uh, we also, in the 31st Psalm, hear that, um, that God, let's see, turn your ear to me, come quickly to my rescue, be, uh, be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save us. So the, the person writing the Psalm is, is begging God to be there and to be that rock and that fortress and God is there for us. God is our rock and our fortress. And in these difficult times, um, whether you are personally dealing with COVID or you're dealing with job loss, maybe you are dealing with fear over the unknown. What are we looking at? What are we, what is coming our way? Why isn't life the way it was a few months ago for us? 
we all have these feelings at different times and in different ways and in different intensities. But know that that rock, that refuge is there for us, that, that cleft in the side of the mountain is a place where we are called to take shelter. I pray that you find a faith home and if Edwards is that place, I, I thank God for you and I thank God for Edwards. And I pray that if you are just coming to Edwards for the first time this morning, or maybe you are worshiping with us, um, this is a new, new time for you. We pray that you will continue to um, reach out to us, perhaps send us an email through our website, which is edwards uh, or find us on Facebook, Edwards UCC. Please send us um, a message. We would love to reach out and to talk to you, to build a relationship with you so that the Edwards congregation can become a place for you, a place that can become a rock and steady place in life where we are always questioning what is the holy way to be the church in the world? How, what's the holy way to live my life? What's the holy way to do my job when I don't really like what I'm doing or I'm having trouble with my coworkers, how do I deal with life? This is the reason that we come together as a worshiping community, as a church community, to build each other up and to be there in these difficult times. So we pray that if you are currently having a difficult time and you need someone to talk to, reach out. I am happy to um, meet you in some, in some way that's safe and appropriate right now. And I pray that you will continue to turn to Edwards as a place where we are called to be together. Let us all turn our ear toward God and let us not be afraid to call to God and ask God to turn God's ear to us. Because that, that passage in John ends with Jesus reminding us that we... Um, can come to him with our deepest requests that he means it. In the, in the message translation, Jesus says, I mean it. Whatever you request in this way, I will do. So please, please take your requests to God in prayer and reach out in community and know that we are all children of God, deeply beloved. May this message cause you to think and respond in ways out in the world as well. Amen. I invite you now to a time of prayer. Let us settle in by taking a deep breath. Taking a breath in, being aware of God's presence with you right now. And as you breathe out, know that that love that is in you reaches out into the world. Let us pray. Loving God, this morning we thank you for our very lives, which was made possible by our birth mothers. We thank you that you put those molecules into motion that became who we are. And we are so grateful for the mothers who raised us, who bore us, who lived with us, who cared for us, who wiped our knees and our noses, who taught us all of the things of life and living. We ask for grace for the things they missed, for the things for which we as mothers inadvertently do that hurt and, and, and harm people, knowing that you are the very one who can heal it all. For those who are experiencing that woundedness, we pray for your healing power on them this morning. For those who have been mothered, by other people in their lives, we give you thanks. For the men who have mothered, for the 
neighbor, for the friend's mom, for dads who do the mothering, for Jesus who taught us all how to care for one another. We pray that those who are in need of this type of mothering might find it that the right people will come along for them at just the right time. We pray for continued opportunities to be that loving and nurturing presence in the world as the rock that sustains us, holds us up to do this good work in the world. We pray for those who have experienced death this past week. We think especially for Janie and Lyle at the death of Janie's mom. We pray for those who have lost parents, friends, neighbors over these past days and weeks and even months. We pray that your love and your peace will hold them up. We pray for those who are sick, either with COVID or another illness or an injury. For those who are living with pain, we pray for your continued healing, for hope, for a possibility. We pray for those who care for them and love them, who support them and walk alongside them, that when they feel weary or when they feel that they just can't keep going on, we pray that you will infuse them with a spirit of strength and truth. We pray for those for whom we don't see we pray for the injustice that we walk past, that we inadvertently condone by being silent. We pray for healing in our country, that despite different ways of looking at the world, that we can find ways to look together in caring for the least of these that your call to care for the sick, the lonely, the widowed, the orphan, that your call to us to care for everyone, not just people who look, look, at, look like us, who worship like us, whose skin is the same color as ours. We pray that we can see with Jesus' eyes and welcome all to the table. We pray that your mercy will become our mercy in this world. We pray for that day when we might all become one. We pray that the words that you taught us through Jesus will ring true in our lives as we pray together the prayer that he taught us by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And let the whole church say, Amen.
together, remember, God is always with you no matter what you face. No matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you like a mother, ready to hold on to you and to be a rock at your side, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know that it is true and holy. All feelings are true and holy, no matter what feelings we have, but also include joy and hope and love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.